እግዚአብሔር ይመስገን አሁን ደግሞ ለነሱ የሚሆነውን የለቱን ትምህርት አዲስ እንግዳ መምህር አሉ በኋላ መምራችን ያስተዋቀዋቸዋል ስማቸውን ብቻ ጠርቼ እግዚአብሔር ፈቅዶ በመካከላችን ተገኝተዋል ወንድማችን መምራችን ዲያቆን ሄኖክ ይባላሉ ጻቸውን ለጋብዝና ለህፃናት ቡ የሚሆነውን የተዘጋጁበትን ትምህርት ለህፃናቱ ያቀርባሉ ወደ መምህራችን ወደ ዲያቆን ሄኖክ ከጻሃይ መውጫ እስከ ጻሃይ መጥለቂያ የእግዚአብሔር ስም የተመሰገነ ይሁን blessed be the name of the lord from the rising of the sun to its setting ayn ta exavier abawina kahanat yemister talalakiyoch abrawachun yemetonu wendimoche diyaqonat indiwon bedeme kristos yetekeberachu na yetekadesachu memenan indemenadderachu may god grant you all health and longevity as we say in our tradition today is the feast of the blessed and holy life-giving paraclete as you all just sang about today is also called pentecost and without getting too much into the numerology numbers are important and fasika or pasca i'll let dr mahari on another day explain to you why it shifts from a f to a p but it's the same thing our easter is not just one day but it's a 50 day celebration and today is the culmination of that today is the 50th day you have 7 days times 7 weeks that gives you 49 days in addition to the first one that gives you 50 days of celebrating fasika you can ask the fathers of the church and they'll tell you how similar the church music is throughout that time but for the final time and and i don't know maybe for, for the first time in english we said it several times earlier today i'll tell you two of the things that are going away after today which are our paschal or our easter greetings the first one it was said in the very early beginning of qaddasi but also uh towards the middle as well which is a a back and forth call and response so i'll just say the whole thing cuz we're not used to it christ is risen from the dead with great power and authority having incarcerated satan he liberated adam from now on there is fisaha wa salam peace and joy and we say that multiple times very similar but differently phrased we also say in zema singing it in lu of what you'll normally hear that this is the time of blessing in the middle of qaddasi we sang with the accompaniment of the qachal or the bell and you'll notice we rarely ever use it so it's very key moments of the liturgy when we have the bell um uh, very very limited amount of times the rest is just all a cappella from the god made instrument of our andabat or our mouth we say christ is risen from the dead and then you have to do this with your feet trampling down death by death and upon those in the tombs bestowing life and eternal rest and so these are the paschal greetings or the easter greetings this is how we say hello to one another as ethiopian orthodox tawahido christians during the season but the season is coming to an end so i'll read from what was today read for us by uh Cassius Tigastu and in English he read for us from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 from verses uh, 22 to 27 so I'll read that in English say a few words and leave you be Men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man attested by God to you by miracles wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of god you have taken by lawless hands have crucified and put to death whom god raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it for david says concerning him i foresaw the lord always before my face for he is at my right hand that i may not be shaken therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad moreover my flesh also will rest in hope for you will not abandon my soul in the place of the dead 
nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. I really like that last part. So I'm going to have you repeat after me. Say, you will not abandon my soul. You will not abandon my soul. One more time. May they hear you on Lake Washington and beyond. You will not abandon my soul. Very good. Now, <laughs> I have one question. I'll take one or two answers. I hear that he has gotten you used to questions, and so I will occasionally ask them as well. And so my simple question is, what is the best birthday you ever had? Someone raise their hand and tell me. Right here. Christmas? Oh, oh, I like that answer. Oh, my God. That is amazing. I was not expecting that answer. You gave the best answer in the world, so I'm not taking any further questions. <laughs> Christmas is the birthday of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, not your own birthday. And so, yes, you chose the greatest birthday ever, Lidata Christos. Oh, my God. You already, I don't need to teach anymore. That's good. No, that was really good. That's the perfect answer. Normally, we go out of our way to celebrate our own birthdays, right? And we could call that not normal, but actually uh, an abnormality after leaving paradise. But this young man is obviously still a man of paradise because he knows that the birthday to celebrate is the birthday of our Lord. We add that in our tradition, the birthday of Our Lady Mary and some other saints as well. But today is the birthday of the church. So if you've ever gone out of your way to plan, to think about what am I going to do on my birthday, what am I going to do for my friend's birthday, and you think about how you're going to sing them songs, bye-bye Duzema, happy birthday to you. Or if you're going to sing it uh, in uh, various versions, there's a, a, a black American Stevie Wonder version people sing nowadays as well. Some people have tried to put some Yare Dawizema in it as well when they're having fun. But if you're ever having any vigor or energy or life inside of you to celebrate any of your birthdays. I'm not going to tell you not to, but I'll tell you there are some moments in scripture that make you pause. For example, the first Christmas, right? There was a king so scared that he was going around taking away babies because he was scared of Jesus's first birthday. Later on, you see his cousin, St. John the Baptist, because of an oath given during someone's birthday, got his head put on a platter. And so we see throughout the Bible, there are kind of warnings about the celebrations of birthdays. But today is the birthday of all of you, of me, of all of us, of the entire one holy universal and apostolic church. Today is the day of the paraclete. As our Qaddasi defines it, the comforter and the cleanser of us all. Scripture also says the paraclete is the advocate, is our lawyer intercedes on our behalf, gives us power when we have no power of our own. Today is also mentioned Pentecost just means the 50th day, which we covered earlier. So in this passage that I just read, you have to wonder, who are the addressees? Who is the audience? The audience is said to be Israel. We're in America. We're not in the state of Israel. Why are we, why are we listening to this? Why are we hearing this? Because Israel has a meaning in the Hebrew language. And again, I have my fellow Hebrew lover with me, so he can give you a different definition another day. One definition I like to say is Israel or Yisrael means he who does submission grappling or jujitsu, a sport that I really like, with God. He who contends with God. He who struggles with God. And it's not just a physical contention, although Jacob did wrestle with the angel who is in the form of God. But... It is about an internal wrestling, an internal grappling with God. So those of you who are here today to celebrate the birthday of the church are here to struggle with God, to learn about God more, to become more godly in everything you do and everywhere you go. And this message is not just for the original biological children of Israel or Israel Zasiga. No, it's for Israel Zanefs or they who are Israel, according to the soul or to the spirit, including all of the Gentiles, all of the people who were not themselves Jews originally. Even in scripture, the two groups who are considered the extreme Gentile. By name, the Scythian 
and the Kushite or the Ethiopian, right? So all of these different people from all of these different places and all of these different times, this message is directed to them. Even though it was given by St. Peter in a specific time and in a specific place, it is a message delivered once for all because it has become scripturalized for us to read it before you in the great congregation and to give God the glory. In it, he mentions how all of them recognize Jesus did things that only a man of God or sent by God could do. And it was that very Jesus that he says, you, even though those people are gathered from all over the world, during the Pentecost holiday, Jews all over the diaspora came from Alexandria, Egypt, from Libya, from all over the world to Jerusalem to celebrate a holiday. Just kind of like today we gather for Timkat and other major holidays of the church from different places. But all of these different people, he said, you, you did these things to Jesus. That's what he says. You did these things to Jesus. And we're continuing to read them. You crucified him and slayed him. Which is a reminder that whenever we are reading the scriptures, it's very easy for us to demonize the other human beings and to say, oh, those silly Israelites. Uh, that would have never been me. I would have never made a golden calf. I would not have been a Pharisee. I would have done everything God wanted me to do. But it's much harder to look and see in what ways have I participated in villainy, in villainous activity. In what ways could I be found culpable and responsible and be held accountable for this thing that I wasn't even there for? And in what ways does that show up in our life? I think my favorite part of this passage, though, comes after that because that's a downer note. And he doesn't end on a downer note. It ends on a high. It ends on hope. And it brings you back to the great misale of Jonas or Jonah and the great whale. When you imagine Jonah and the great whale, or if you've never read that part of scripture in the book of the 12, at least I hope you've seen Pinocchio, which copies from it liberally, right? It, when you see that, the giant fish swallows him and has him in for three days. But eventually, what happens to Jonah? He, he, got spit out. he got spit out. Exactly right again. Well done. You understand the gospel. I could tell already. This is what death did. When we say, He trampled down death by death. This is what we mean. Death tried to hold on to him. Death tried its best. But it says it was not possible. It was impossible for death to hold on to Jesus Christ. So death, like the big fish that spit out Jonah, had to spit out our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was compelled. It wasn't an option. And he got out. He was raised from the dead. In fact, this entire passage about him being raised from the dead on the third day, it's about the hope of his resurrection. His ascension, which we passed by recently, and I'm sure you learned about, meant that the human flesh he received from his mother, the Holy Virgin Mary, gives us hope because it ascended. It went up into the skies, into the heavens, so that he could not just die again like Lazarus or Alazar, right? That would be pointless. No. So that he could be raised unto power. The right hand is power. If any of you are aficionados of combat sports, you'll see that. People usually, I mean, there are left-handed people, but the knockout hand is the right hand. And that's how it was in ancient Israel. And that's what this word Yaman means. It's in the word Benjamin. If you know anyone named Binyam or Benjamin, right? It's that Yaman. Even there's a country, Yemen, which is named after this. It's the right hand. That's where he was raised unto. Unto power, our flesh, our humanity which he received from the Holy Virgin Mary, is in heaven. And that is the hope of the resurrection that we get, is that he is seated at his right hand of his Father. At the end, I was fascinated reading this passage at the end, in Ge'ez, if I butcher it, my fathers will correct me. It says here at the end of this passage, in Ge'ez, And yet Deacon Mahari sang for us a misbak, which is almost identical. He said, and then again, Kaddus Yarid, in his song apportioned for today, 
He said, Again and again, you hear these two things that are synonyms. There's nothing new being said, but he says it for emphasis. Rejoice and be glad. Here, it says his heart rejoices and his tongue is glad. That's the same thing said in different ways so that you remember. And again, in the Psalms, it said, today is the day which the Lord has made so that we may rejoice and be glad in her. And again, St. Jared the Oxumite said, may the heavens rejoice and may the earth be glad. So again, this rejoicing and being glad, it's the whole spirit of this Paschal season. It's the spirit of the hope of the resurrection. And it's why I'm going to have you repeat it again. Say, you will not abandon my soul.